Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the symposium on evaluation of anticoagulation, where we are all taking a look back at the anticoagulation era today. This educational event here is such a memorable one for us also because our products are all is turning seven year old this month in Myanmar. For that, in addition to extending our warm welcome to our event, we would like to say a big thank you to our honorable chairpersons, invited speakers, professors, associate professors, consultants, fellow doctors and distinguished guests for your continuous support and contribution to the extra moments of patients in Myanmar throughout the years since the day one. I am Dr. Jiwe Mo, and I will be your MC for the rest of the event. Before the symposium has begun, I would like to share the agenda as follow. Item number one, welcome speech by Professor Zoliao. Item number two, navigating the challenges of paroxysmal atrial fibrillation by Dr. Praveen. Item number three, management of venous thromboembolism, physician's perspective by Dr. Professor Heng Azaa. Item number four, question and answer section. Item number five, closing remarks by Professor Chun Wen Ye. Item number six, lunch. Since uh, today's event is a hybrid one, I would also like to request, especially to those who are joining virtually, that in case, if there's connection error or disturbance while joining the event, please kindly refresh or log in via the link again to be with us again. For the questions to be asked, please kindly type your questions in the Q&A box while the topics are being discussed or during the Q&A section. We really encourage all of our attendees to participate in the section as well. As to kick off this morning's program, we are pleased to have our Honorable Chairperson, Professor Zoliang, Senior Consultant Physician, former Professor in Head, Department of Medicine, University of Medicine One, up on stage to deliver the welcome speech. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really proud uh, and glad to be here to chair in this section along with uh, my colleagues, uh, Professor Tuan Nguyen. Uh, in today's event, uh, evolution of uh, anticoagulation, a look back at Zarato's uh, 7th year anniversary. And I also like to thank the Bayes Company for kind support for this event. And uh, Welcome all the doctors attending here face-to-face -face as well as you know, joining this symposium uh, online. Uh, there will be two parts, as Master of Ceremony mentioned. The first part is uh, uh, management of proxysmal atrial fibrillation uh, by Dr. Praveen uh, Paul from uh, Panline Hospital. And the second part is going to be management of venous thromboembolism by the Professor Hei Yaza from University of Medicine to Yango. Uh, as you all know, uh, atrial fibrillation is very common. Arrhythmia is seen in our daily clinical practice. We can say, you know, uh, commonest after sinus tachycardia. And then uh, there are so many causes of atrial fibrillation. Some of them are related to the underlying cardiac diseases like ischemic heart disease, hypertension, cardiomyopathy, pulmonary heart disease, and valvular heart diseases in tropical countries like mitrostenosis and uh, um, cardiomyopathies as well. Okay, some other causes uh, like non-cardiac causes uh, of atrial fibrillation are thyrotoxicosis, chronic heavy alcohol drinking, pneumonias, chronic obstructive airway disease, et cetera. That's why, you know, you're being seen many atrial fibrillation in your daily clinical practice. When we look at the, you know, different types of uh, atrial fibrillations, there are four main different types. The first one is a proxismal atrial fibrillation. Another one is a, you know, a persistent one. And third one is a long uh, lasting persistent one and the fourth one is permanent one. Today our speaker Dr. Praveen is going to highlight the proxismal atrial fibrillations because the proxismal atrial fibrillation is quite transient that sometimes we may you know <clears throat> uh, not noticed or under treated which can cause uh, important sequelae like uh, venous thromboembolism leading to the stroke which is a long-term morbidity and there are some other strategies uh, in the management of uh, atrial fibrillation. Um, your doctors, you know, we try to convert the rhythm to normal, but uh, sometimes as we cannot uh, convert the atrial fibrillation to the sinus rhythm, we can reduce the you know, heart rate. This is another strategy. And third one is uh, 
to prevent the development of the venous thromboembolism. Today, the speaker is going to highlight the prevention of the uh, venous thromboembolism by using oral anticoagulants. In the past, when we look at the history of our usage of the anticoagulants, uh, we had used uh, vitamin K antagonist in the past. But in long time ago, you know, uh, we haven't got the, any facility to use warfarin and even monitoring system like IANA after about uh, 30 uh, years back. But after the introduction of the low molecular weight heparin, another limitation for usage of the low molecular weight heparin is an injectable form. And nowadays, we're being, you know, using oral, newer oral anticoagulants like a NOAC and direct acting or anticoagulants like a DOAC, which are now available uh, with a reasonable price in our countries and the usage of which will be highlighted by the two speakers today. I'd like to introduce first speaker because uh, the second speaker and the second topic will be introduced by the Professor Tony later, but I'd, I'd like to introduce Dr. Praveen to the audience. Uh, actually, he has got his MBBS degree from uh, Government Medical College, uh, Kolhapur, from India. And then he also obtained Master of Medicine uh, from the MLB Medical College, uh, Jansi. And then he has obtained his National Board of Examination Cardiology in 2014 uh, <clears throat> from Esteem Care Hospitals, Hyderabad. And he has been currently working as a consultant intervention cardiologist with eight years in PCI standing, cardiac critical care and heart failure. He has successfully and independently performed over 1,500 cardiac procedures, including angiograms, angioplasties, permanent pacemakers with 99% success rate. He has been well treating over 500 outpatients per month with a echo, TMT and HOTA in the department. Uh, it, he has been doing interventional cardiology proficiency in stand development, Doppler, flow wire, pressure wire, intravascular ultrasound, valvoplasty, uh, rotational arthrectomy, and directional arthrectomy. Now, may I invite Dr. Bravin Poel to give your lecture, navigating the challenges of uh, proximal atrial fibrillation. Shall we welcome uh, Dr. Bravin, please? Ninglava. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Prof, for the nice discussion, my introduction. Hello, professors. So today, I'm going to present the topic on the navigating the challenges of the paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. So as we know, in the work, daily practice, everybody come across the atrial fibrillation, whether it is general practice, cardiologists, surgeons, everybody. <clears throat> Most Common arrhythmia we know is the atrial fibrillation. So atrial fibrillation is the most common arrhythmia affecting the heart with the estimated lifetime risk of around 20 to 26%. As we day by day, the medical advance, our age is, our community age is increasing. The atrial fibrillation is the arrhythmia which is related to the age. With the age, the incidence definitely increase. And to the surprise, at the age of 80, 10% of the population about 80 has the atrial fibrillation. So this is one of the most common arrhythmias which we will encounter in the future. So by definition, I would like to cl classify the atrial fibrillation. It is a supraventricular tachycardia because it arises from the atrium. So, and it leads to the ineffective contraction of the atrium, which causes a clot. On ECG, it is characterized by the irregular RR interval. You see the QRS complex, which are irregular. There will be the absence of the P waves and irregular atrial activities. So this is the most common type of arrhythmias, and this is ECG definition. Mostly you can confuse with the para multifocal atrial tachycardia, but if it is an irregular RR interval, mostly it is atrial fibrillation. So an American Heart Association has classified the atrial fibrillation into 
four types. So it is paroxysmal AF. So paroxysmal AF is the intermittent in nature, which terminately spontaneously within seven days of the treatment. It may take 24 hours also. It may be treatment by the treatment or spontaneous. It is called as paroxysmal AF. What is persistent AF? If the AF persists beyond the seven days, maybe up to 30 days, or it is called as persistent AF. If it is more than one month, we call it as long lasting AF. And the permanent AF is the term is coined for the AF, which is rhythm strategy will not work. Means uh, there are many rhythm strategies, which includes the drugs as well as the catheter ablation. So if the patient has the permanent AF, this catheter ablation as well as the amidron drugs will not work in this. So paroxysmal AF. So why I'm focusing on the paroxysmal AF because uh, it is most underdiagnosed entity. Most of the times we get the palpitations and we say, oh, nothing happened. And then suddenly someday patients comes in the stroke unit. And then we find that it was because of the atrial fibrillation. So this paroxysmal AF almost in 77% of the cases progress to the permanent AF. So what are the mechanisms of the atrial fibrillation? Usually we classify it into the two types. It's a atrial structural abnormality or it can be because of atrial electrical abnormalities. So primarily it happens in the atrial structural abnormality. So what happens when the patients are of the chronic hypertension? Uh -huh. They got the left ventricular hypertrophy, subsequently the LV pressure increases and it makes the LA to dilate. With the age, you will get the fibrosis, left ventricular dilatation, ischemia, hypertrophy, and infiltrative disorders, which may lead to the abnormality of the structure. This abnormality in structure in turns affects also to the atrial electrical abnormalities. So we know that the sinus node fires the first SA node and then it comes to the AV node and then it comes via the Purkinje fibers. So here the sinus node function is taken over by the multiple automatic centers. We call, therefore, there is an increased automaticity because this fibrotic structure can trigger spontaneously and cause AF. So there are increased heterogeneity, decreased conduction or decreased accent potential and refractiveness. These are the some micro uh, electrical abnormalities which leads to AF. So what are the secondary causes we have been, which leads to all this? We all know that so, uh, hypertension, obesity, sleep apnea, hyperthyroidism and alcohol or drug abuse. Alcohol itself can cause the paroxysmal AF. We know that Saturday night palsy or we can say the increase incidence increases after taking the alcohol. Atrial tachycardia, undiagnosed tachycardia, which is atrial tachycardia missed on the ECG as a sinus tachycardia can lead to the persistent of the tachycardia and tachycardiomyopathy, which leads to the heart dilatation and cause AF various channelopathies, some inflammatory or oxidative stress, as well as the RAS activation. Why I'm emphasizing on the RAS activation? Because one of the risk factor for the AF is hypertension. And this chronic hypertension we use, leads to the remodeling of the heart like LVH as well as LA dilatation. And therefore, ARBs and ACI in the hypertension are used, which can reduce the incidence of AF in future. So this is most important part to, to prevent or to delay the formation of AF. Because of it is paroxysmal, it is underdiagnosed and untreated. It has been reported that up to one third of the population of the AF has the silent AF. And hence awareness and early detection of AF is very important. So we use mostly where the, we see the AF and when they come for the general medical checkup or they presented in the ED as a stroke or they come for the another 
disease or the surgery and on ECG we find them to have the atrial fibrillation. So this is the electrocardiogram of the ECG. So you cannot see any distinct P waves. You can see the irregular rhythm. There is no P waves. So these are fine P waves. Okay, these are coarse P waves. Okay, this can be seen. But you can see that RR interval is varying. So when the RR interval is varying, it is called as atrial fibrillation. So as per the ESC, the definition, we have to record the 12, it's a single lead 30 seconds ECG or the 12 lead ECG, which is showing there are no disc discrinable P waves and the irregular RR interval. It's called as diagnosis of the clinical AF. So we are in the area of the artificial intelligence. So we are going to, in future, AI will be the part of our practice. So most of the time, so where the AI came in the cardiology is for the detection of the atrial fibrillation. If you go to the cardiology conference, there will be 10 to 15 stall demonstrating how we can diagnose AF. And not only all the governments are very aggressive in diagnosing and treating the AF because it is one of the cause of the morbidity, you know. So once you get the stroke, you are the morbid people and that is a burden for the community also. So advancement in the digital technology is highly contribute for the early screening of AF in general population. So what are the technologies we use in the atrial fibrillation? So there are the electronic health records, implantable loop recorders, wearable sensory data, analytical and artificial intelligence, behavioral and health and personal medicine. So when you see the mobile health, which is everybody carrying, so the mobile home, mobile health is the, which one is most accessible and how we can diagnose the AF via this. So there are the different type of technology for the detection and management of the atrial fibrillation. You can see there is a first uh, photoplethysmography where the wristband type or forehead type, we have the Apple watch, SIM band or uh, uh, gear feet or Hawaii band. So other, these bands are, utilizes the infrared light, which measures the volumetric variations in the blood pressure, in the blood flow. So this is a low cost and have the predictive value of more than 80%. We have the blood pressure monitors like Omoron and uh, it detects the vibrations and produces the arterial wall. And because of the blood flow between the systolic and diastolic uh, transition into the electrical signals and we can get that it is AF or not. So it is a reliable screening tool in elderly population. So most of the patients when they come for the blood pressure uh, cuff, they say my heart rate is not stable. It's sometimes 40, 50, 70 because the heart rate variability on the Omron machine. So at that time, we should always suspect them having, having the atrial fibrillation because the Apple or watch, they can tell, but Omron may not tell. So at that time, you can suspect that way. So other handhold machines, which are, are there in the market for the long run, it's a Cardia mobile app, which is just a small stick where we can just keep the both finger and touch it on the, the knee. You can record your ECG, that ECG can be sent to the uh, system or it has been interpreted by the computer and then you can show it to the doctor. So when it's, it's, it has been done when you, are, you have the symptoms of the palpitation. So that is a good diagnostic tool whenever you have the symptoms with the sensitivity of 90%. And the patch ECG monitor. So there are multiple patches, butterfly patches you, you can apply over the chest. So initially we used to use the implantable loop recorder. Okay, like holter monitoring for the 14 days monitoring. Now we have the patch devices. Just stick the patch to the chest and you can record after the 15 days. Even the patch has the button where you can record the activity whenever you have the palpitation. So these are some devices which we are used for the paroxysmal layup. So Apple Watch, I'm saying this as Apple Watch has changed uh, and we are able to diagnose a lot of cases because of this fit band that is a loop recorder holter we do usually 24 hours but for the 48 hours or 
uh, 14 days, the, we, we have the patch ECG or this. If patch ECG is not available, then we have the oleo care devices. So where we see the sensitivity and specificity of the various method for diagnosing the AF, so the pulse taking has around, pulse taking means when you see the pulse and where it is irregularly irregular, that is called as atrial fibrillation, okay? So we can find around 87 to 97%. So you can see the automated BP monitors, single lead ECG, smartphone warps, watches, everything is now been sophisticated to diagnose the atrial fibrillation. So what are the potential benefits of this artificial intelligence and the risk? Risk sometimes because of the error or sometimes there are the abnormal reasons can cause anxiety to the patients. Like if sometimes where we got that uh, pulse oximeter and people, many came to hospital, they got the heart rate of 30, how are they? When we analyze it, they were having the ventricular premature complexes. So what happened when the patients have the VPCs, this pulse oximeter will show only the half rate, although their heart rate is 70. So that was unnecessary anxiety in the patient and they came to the hospital. Sometimes it may lead to the overdiagnosis, overtreatment, and which may lead to the fatal complications. But the benefits outweighs the risk. Here we can see the if we diagnose the early atrial fibrillation, we can prevent the stroke in the patients at the early onset of the symptoms. We can do the electrical or mechanical atrial remodeling, AF-related hemodynamic derangements, and atricular, atrial and ventricular tachycardia induced cardiomyopathy. So all these things, AF-related mortality, hospitalizations can be controlled. So some of the atrial fibrillation which are in the early stage can be ablated mainly by doing the cryoablation it is a carto guided ablation 3d mapping by the pulmonary vein isolation where is the most of the common focus for the atrial fibrillation if you diagnose early in a permanent or paroxysmal air we can treat it back so what conditions may confuse with the af so this is a common tachycardias anxiety or panic attacks hyperthyroidism or some underlying heart disease, such as coronary artery disease, volvular heart disease, and muscular abnormalities. So we know what are the leading causes of the atrial fibrillation. Hypertensive heart disease, coronary heart disease, volvular heart disease, heart failure, congenital heart disease like ASD in the long run can cause the atrial fibrillation. Various cardiomyopathies, which may be infiltrative cardiomyopathies or amyloid cardiomyopathies, can cause age-related sick sinus syndrome okay? and pre-excitation syndrome. Both can lead to the atrial fibrillation. What are the non-cardiac causes which can lead? So these are the chronic lung disease. Most of the patients of the chronic lung disease on the alpha agonist or beta agonist, they have the action on the heart. They call the tachycardia. In the long run, these COPD cases may cause the atrial fibrillations. Pulmonary embolisms, if it is CTEPH, means chronic pulmonary thromboembolism may lead to the atrial fibrillation. And uh, acute infections, thyroid disorders, pheochromocytomas, and post-surgically, there are some paroxysmal AF or post-cardio because we touch the heart and other things. So post-CVTS, cardiovascular surgery, the AF can be persisted. So other things we should always think about the obesity, obstructive sleep apnea, alcohol intake and smoking. So these are the modifiable risk factors we should always think and modified before and uh, along with treating the AF. Okay. So this includes diabetes, smoking, OSA and uh, hypertension, dyslipidemia and the mild to moderate uh, and the physical inactivity. So all that things should be treated and that are the target. HbA1c should be seven. LDL should be around less than 150. Treat, and OSC should be treated with the CPAP, obesity. Because if you don't treat this, the recurrence of AF will be very high. As long as patient is in sinus rhythm, he is good. So we see the most clinical factors we in the patients of the AF, which are 
the same as we discussed. What are the risk factors? We find the same factors in the when the patient diagnosed with the AF retrospectively. Mainly on the echocardiography, what you will find in the AF is uh, you can find the valvular heart disease or you can find the cardiomyopathy or ischemic cardiomyopathy. And mainly you should see the left atrial size. Left atrial size defines do you, how much risk of stroke you have. The more the left atrium volume or the size, the more the stroke risk is high. So ideally, if the normal size of the left atrium is 3.9 centimeter, if it is more than 4.7 centimeter, it suggests that there will be the high risk of stroke. So annual rate of risk of stroke uh, in paroxysmal AF is 3.3%. Thus the prevention is must in non-volvular AF is must. Okay, so I would like to just uh, rebrush the knowledge about the CHAD score, which includes CHAD S2, congestive heart failure, heart hypertension, age, diabetes mellitus, and stroke and TIA. So newer score, they added the CHAD's WAS2 score. In this, they involve the vascular, uh, vascular structures, includes peripheral vascular diseases, along with the myocardial infarction. They also reconsider the age of 64 to 74 and the sex female as a one point. So CHATS was score, it defines the, how much the risk of. If it is more than two, the risk is more and the anticoagulation is needed. So Hasbleed score, we have to balance because we have many, every patient is different. So we need to calculate the Hasbleed score or you can know which patients more mainly. So, so what is hypertension if it is more than 160? If there is a chronic liver disease, hepatitis C patients, raised LFTs, they already have the raised INR. If you are putting more anticoagulation, they will bleed. Like a stroke history of previous massive stroke, uh, bleeding history or predisposition. Some are very thin skin with the 10 milligram also, they will get the patches, labile INR, vascular disease and age. So among this has bleed score, if it is more than two or five or three, we should consider to be careful about the anticoagulation. So if it is more than three, uh, it has 5.8%. So we need to balance the benefit versus risk. But what I want to emphasize that the hypertension, which is more than 160, you can control it. If the patient is on anticoagulation and his hypertension is not controlled, the bleeding risk intracranial increases. So whatever patients and try to control the hypertension in these patients. So the patients with the AF, with the CHADS was to score, greater than the two or three oral anticoagulation is recommended. We already have on the net, just put the record and the, they have the calculator, just calculate during the first time treatment. So you are more safe that you are starting the treatment to the patient. So I will not go to the management of the rate control and rhythm control. So rate or rhythm control has the same outcome. We have to give the anticoagulation for the patient of the atrial fibrillation. Rate control, we use the beta blockers mainly. And for the rhythm control, we can use the rate uh, uh, rhythm control drug like uh, amiodron or propafenone. And uh, in the interventional technique, we have the catheter ablation for the patients with the paroxysmal or per uh, persistent AF, but not for the permanent AF, okay? So I will concentrate more on the newer oral anticoagulations today. So we mainly know there are the four which is available, currently well studied in the market, dabigatron, rivaroxaban, apixaban, and endoxaban. So, NOAX are eligible in the patient with the non volvular AF, except in the cases of moderate to severe stenosis, mitral stenosis, or mechanical wall prosthetics, okay, or in the patient with the chronic kidney disease, stage 5. Okay, so these are the some indications, some are contraindications where we do not use newer oral anticoagulations. One more confusion happens if the patient has the CHATS was score one, should we treat them or not? So if CHATS was score one and the patient has the modifiable risk factors, you can 
control just give the aspirin and try to modify the risk factors if the 50 year male came with the af with no other risk factors la size is normal at that time you can just consider to have aspirin okay because they have very low risk of the stroke second when the patient has the thromboembolic risk is high then you balance between the has bleed score versus the thromboembolic risk. If the bleeding risk is low, but thromboembolic risk is high, you consider for the anticoagulation with the chad was score one. So there are some criteria where we can consider anticoagulation in the patient with chad was score one. It is uh, uh, with the age more than 65, diabetes mellitus, atrial fibrillation and persistent atrial fibrillation if BMI is more than 30, EGFR around 45, anti-pro BNP is high, LA volume. This is most important what we can find. It's more than 4.7 centimeter. So whenever you refer the patient for the echo, ask from the LA size. That makes much more difference. So let's go for the dosing of the anticoagulation, the practical point when we are treating the patient with the atrial fibrillation. Okay. Initially, we were scared of giving the doses. What are the doses? Should I under treat or over treat? Might be the Myanmar population, US population. So, yeah, there are some differences, and uh, we can change according to our clinical practice. But uh, currently, as per the ESC guidelines, the current doses for the dabigatron is 150 milligrams twice a daily. For the rivorexaban is 20 milligram once a daily. For apixaban, it is 5 mg twice a daily. Endoxaban, 60 mg once a daily. Now, currently, first three molecules are available in Myanmar. Rest of the molecules are not. So, Dabigatron, it is debated whether we should give 150 or 110. If you give 110, 150, the bleeding risk increases at the same protection. Uh, but the, if you Q110, the bleeding risk will be reduced, but the protection will be reduced. So it is still in the debate, but it is widely used in the India because of the low cost. Second, uh, when we should use the reduced dose? Reduced dose is uh, recommended uh, in the rivoraxaban 15 mg when your EGFR is around 15 to 45, 49 ml. So it has been consistently studied that uh, rivoraxaban can be used in the mild renal dysfunction patient at the reduced dose. For the apixaban, the recommended reduced dose at the above age of 80 or if the patient body weight is less than 60. Endobaxan also same if the creatinine, we can reduce the dose if the creatinine clearance is 15 to 50 or the patient has the high risk of the bleeding. So the you understand the normal doses and the reduced doses, okay? So we see the comparison of the NOVAX in the stroke prevention. Almost all are the, so we, com the, we compare, these are the direct factor 10A inhibitors, first 10, okay? And dabigatron is the thrombin inhibitor. Oral viability of the rivoraxaban is around 80 to 100 percent and uh, other is 60, 50, okay? So along that, the fixed dosing, we should know the dosing. As, as I told, Rivoraxaban is once a day and it can cover 24 hours. Apixaban is BID, Endoxaban is OD, and Dabigatron is BID. So during the Rivoraxaban, we should always uh, remember that it should be given with the full meals. Otherwise, the absorption will not be okay. Okay, so after the post-breakfast, Educate meal, you should give the rivaroxaban so the absorption is 100% and you get the good results. So these are some mechanisms in short for the theoretical purpose. We have the factor 10A is the most important in the anticoagulation pathway. We have the uh, intramuscular parenteral uh, anticoagulation, which is uh, Fonda Perinox factor 10A inhibitor. Okay, and when we go to the oral direct factor 10A inhibitors, we these are the three, rivaroxaban, apixaban, and doxaban. Only the dabigatron is the direct thrombin inhibitor. So this clinical trials compared the head to head. There is not much difference among the uh, anticoagulants, but it is the perspective and it is also the 
whatever you are more comfortable with which anticoagulants is more important and your personal experience. So these are the studies which uh, has changed the way we think about the atrial fibrillation because warfarin is the most complicated drug to treat. Every 15 days, INR 2, 3, 4, 5, you are worried, patient worried, dietary restrictions. But Rocket F, Aristotle, Engage, and Relay. These trials changed the history in the human mankind and has given us the best newer anticoagulations or direct oral anticoagulations. So these are all compared. So as compared, there was no much difference between the risk of bleeding or stroke prevention. They all were similar, but there are some issue, some uh, things like uh, Revorex 7 was checked in the 3.5, a little bit high chat score. And uh, it has been specifically studied in the renal dose. Sometimes uh, endoxiban, the uh, people are uh, saying that endoxiban prevents the dementia in the newer studies they said. So like this, other advantages are there for. So what is the, everybody was worried, what will be the major risk of bleeding if I take the anticoagulation? So the major risk of bleeding will be around 1.4 to 3.4% per year if you take the anticoagulation, okay? So, but as compared to the warfarin, the intracranial bleeding will be less in these cases. It will be 0.3% and 1.4, it will be more of the abdominal bleeding. So I suggest just as a clinical point, you should consider the PPIs when you are using the patient with the anticoagulation and as well as I recommend for antiplatelet aspirin. PPI at least twice a week or daily if the patient wants. Okay. So recommendations, I, I already told that the AF patient with the ischemic stroke and long-term secondary prevention stroke, we should give the no strict contraindications for OSC with the preference. We can use the NOAX. After the, there, is, there are the queries after the ischemic stroke, when should we start NOAX if the patient is on atrial fibrillation? In the ischemic stroke, you can start, if it is a minor stroke, you can start after 48 hours. If it is a major stroke, Depending upon the neurological concerns, we can start at the same day, seven days. So earlier the starting is better. We can prevent more mortality and the recurrence of the ischemic stroke. So that is one thing. After the intracranial hemorrhage, some it is up to the healing. Some says two weeks or some says four weeks after the intracranial hemorrhage, after the bleeding has been ceased. So this was one study. So journal, the trials, important information that the early introduction of the DOAX appears to have advantage in preventing the, in preventing the uh, stroke. So just uh, in short, I will tell about the bleeding complications and how to manage them. So if you are giving warfarin, vitamin K antagonist in these patients and you need to control the bleeding, if it is a minor bleeding, just, uh, uh, INR is little bit three or four, you just delayed one or two days, you can skip the vitamin K antagonist and then you can restart with the reduced dose. If it is a moderate to severe bleeding, withhold the anticoagulant uh, warfarin and you can give the IV uh, vitamin K antagonist, one milligram to 10 milligram, depending upon the severity of the bleeding. And another thing, wherever you can compress the bleeding, compress the bleeding. If it is GI bleeding, give PPI, okay? If it is per rectal bleeding, then you can show to the surgeon and then things. Life-threatening bleeding, the other treatment, along with this vitamin K, you can give the prothrombin complex concentrate, which is the concentrate made of factor two, seven, nine, and 10. So that is one of the useful. So when we go to the NOVAX, so it is a very gray area. Still, we don't have the very good anti- uh, dots for the NOVAX, but uh, they are in the, they are already in the newer market. But because of they are very less use, they are not available everywhere. So if it is minor bleeding, you can just delete the NOVAX. If it is moderate to severe, you can just do the gastroscopy or sometimes blood transfusion, fluid replacement, other things. And if the patient has taken two hours and he has a bleeding, you can give the charcoal so that it can reduce the absorption. Some studies you can give the specific antidote or uh, pro, pro, prothrombin complex, okay? Factor 10A and uh, 
direct factor 10a inhibitors are available adrazumab and adexinet are the antidotes for the rivaroxaban and apixaban uh, and the for the dabigatran apixaban still don't have any reversal agent so in, in af patient when the water the active bleeding for management of active bleeding on oral anticoagulation so if it is a severe bleeding it is recommended to interrupt the oral anticoagulant and uh, we should use the proper reversal agent and manage the cause of the bleeding if it is gi bleeding do the endoscopy and you can ligate it so tachymosis is a uh, atrial fibrillation is the most common arrhythmias and paroxysmal af is often underdiagnosed and undertreated the annual rate of stroke rate is 3.3% and ecg is the gold standard for diagnosis we should always use hasblit score chartsua score which is freely available on the internet before starting the treatment just as a routine theoretical is very good and uh, prevention of stroke in af osa which is preferably by guideline recommended and uh, i want to say that the paroxysmal af and atrial fibrillation treatment are same okay both has the equal chance of having the stroke so i should treat under under treat the paroxysmal af is a wrong myth kindly treat both as the same and give anticoagulation to both thank you uh thank you dr pravin bhuwar for your very comprehensive and you know uh complete talker regarding the management of uh, proximal atrial fibrillation as we are going to do the q and a section only after the second speaker may i invite uh, professor ton ton lenye to introduce a second topic and uh, uh, introduce a second speaker as well hello me minglawa tini tini muri yo ani re ja na au ma le events na khun ne chat ni re ja sia ru โอเคแค่ดิจาราเตยอลาจาราอารมณ์เลยเจซูติมาเลยสรุปทีนี้จันทร์วาระ 2 ကျွန်တော်တို့လည်းကျွန်တော်လည်းအချိန်ညအရာသလိုလိုက်လိုက်တက်ပါတယ်ကိုစပါမှာအဒီအကြိမ်မဖတ်ရဲနဲ့ပ
ตอบบัวบ่เนาะเปียบๆตอมาဖြစ်ပါတယ်ပရော်ဖက်ဆာဟင်းရဇာအောင်တော့ဆရာတို့အားလုံးလဲတီဗီဒါပါဝယ်လ
medical history machine, medication spama tau ni ra machine, iri yo jano ro yao la re. Let's say in the private or in pub, public hospital, left leg pain and swelling for 24 hours for no. So ro, ta miyo la bi so in jano ro wa tong sa na as usual, hemodynamically stable pi ye la, pass rate ga balu le, heart rate ga balu le, saturation balu le, as usual, chi lai do, everything fine. Apart from the left cup swelling, so we proceed low like barre. Dini amale scoring ni mabio ra jang shi de. Jono ra scoring ni blue webio na so ni arole scoring ni ucho kwa biro di se me yau doara webo no. So we ultrasound like to alai de kama occlusive DVD doa de and di dima is also increased. Di dima ga ro jono ru after COVID ma ro judiciously jono ru don piu ame. Tulu aro kunau by guideline ma age adjusted. Didaima luha miyo go tombo. Didaima tembo te kude go ji biro other circumstantial evidence yo. Ma ji be ne diagnosis ma low po ku nao bai after COVID era ma recommendation ya. Shi de dwe. Didaima alone is not sufficient to diagnose VDE so re message liyo le di ni ane jano information page ma. Ero di lu nao jano sa bi lu shen A, B, C, D bo no. Jano ro anticoagulation ta miyo re be pin yin kao ma la. Pien ni ra ga ba le so ro and provoked DVD. Our problem is that we have to do that. So, anticoagulation alone, la, to remove pokong or in addition to that, thrombolysis li to ajin de la, compressive stockings li or to ajin de la, to remove IVC filter insertion lo miu miya to ajin de la, so you know, dikya dikya re legu re ma chano roa EU be jwe baare. That particular patient deserves the anticoagulation only, you know, okay, ero, and the coagulation is general PAB, no? Therapy alone, eh, kuna, general thrombolysis, ne, compare low data studies, eh, miya yishi baare, daga le ash ma, thiru mention low data studies, no? Ay ma, chi lai do, risk with anticoagulation, eh, on the other hand ma, coagulation, anticoagulation plus thrombolytic therapy, toa lai de ka ma, bleeding risk ka, na miyo toa e lai yin, to do so re, so ra, thiru toa e, anticoagulation plus thrombolysis, no? No? Model D, nenele po yore, PTS lo kore post-thrombotic syndrome o no, da yi bidwa yin chanro ki yong yen na, po yore su do nya le, chanro ru chow da, kuna beo dhulu, miza da pe yi, mo da pe. So ro, da pe ka yi shen la ma le chow de o no, so re ka jaro chanro ru chow de, chow do anticoagulation alo ma we de, do do le, ba li ro exception shi le so, patients with limb threatening DVD so yin no, may require thrombolysis in addition to anticoagulation only. So, the are unprovoked DVD, anticoagulation only in general to ame. So, the management of VDE and modal these day, PNG lai lo shen yin, general phase thong gu miya ba me, initial phase, active treatment or primary treatment phase ne, secondary prevention phase. Ari phase thong gu ma, general to nai ne, modal these ga le miyo shi de, conventional general SC, low molecular weight heparin plus warfarin lai da da, general yu yi ye bi. Ne pao miya zwa di tren ne, general to ake ja de. Oh ma, at the depo la re, parenteral day ka chano ru da bigger trend lu ha miu. Study say recover, recover to ru, tu a du kon shi de. And then, tu a re ka jaro, luna dwe a sen tek ma bie u, da ke ren chano ru Burmese population dwe ka. Insulin nao ma ne ten ya re, anticoagulation tu kai me su, tu ro tu sha re. Tu do le chano ru ma le consensi, shi de ka jaro. Le le kuku we tau lu ya e no po sen bie re, so oh ma, na ku. Tu mea daimi ma le to ni du zwa be, oro, anti coagulant si po la re re ma, river rook se ben pa la re, and then epic se ben pa la re. Tu ye sturdy si lao lao la la, twa ta ra re, shi re, river rook se ben so in Einstein, DVD, Einstein, PE. Pi indefinitely se be, Einstein extension so re, sturdy si le shi re bo, no? Epic se ben so le to ni du zwa be, amplifying so be, tu ane du akon lo ta ra shi re. Ba ane lo ta le so, kuna conventional to re bi pi te SC, low molecular heparin plus, Warfarin e dhru dwe lew thara wo, no? So ro, recommendations ka ba bio le so ro, kuna lu model dis legu shi do nya le, dhru recommend lew daro, do x over vka. Warfarin te sa lu shen, do x te pebo gu we, di lu miu vidi pishen si ma, dhru a recommend lew daro, jano ru a toa tui le. Risk te u shen ji lai do, in terms of mortality, pulmonary embolism, divine thrombosis, major bleed, ji lai yin, vka e te sa lu shen yin, do X ka, to do yu ta ni re, so rao, ta tui re, wano. Tui re ka jaro, to do a do X u, to mo gu ve po viro, first line in a recommend lo de, to do le, exception ngaro, may not be applicable to any patient population. D 
DVD ne lada mia, PE ne lada mia, no extra ya me. Di luar le, mahuk di bu, clinician ngap yang senza abu lu ada. Kuna abu tu lu do extra ya, mia isi dera ya. Jono ru beha jui malah suruh. Di malah, the panel does not suggest one do ek over another. River rugs abang tau amla, epic abang tau amla, beha gu tau amla suruh tu lu beha ma. Specifically, pure thara machine, you know. So we can use River Rugs Event or we can use Epic Seven as well. And what do you know? Rajan or what the River Rugs Event? Yeah, but maybe you couldn't hear piece or River Rugs Event. But that is study is little Rajan or then explore little thara. She they want no. Hey ma, Einstein DVD she they Einstein PE so we she. To a balo dale so the DVD patient see the group she they want. Yeah, Luna ba, don't know ngaya lao she they. And I go. River Ruxaban go primary kuna initial phase ma 15 milligrams BD 21 days be like B and no followed by 20 milligrams OD for three to six months be like the arm to kushi. Daga DVD luna web pp, P luna web pp. The pema now arm to kua badwale so conventional therapy with SC low molecular heparin followed by VKE, warfarin like the osure she. Say ya be. Hobi saya biro telah aja ma follow up ma primary outcome ni secondary outcome tu lupa yang saji. Primary outcome ni aro shema ni dua PE wen dua la DVD yang pih telah tiri telah bo no. Secondary outcome ni aro bleeding risk tu tu assess lu tara si. Si lo di study ni aku lama bahaya le su do. Primary efficacy outcome ma fatal PE dead DVD PE DVD only PE only. River exam ni conventional terapi SC low molecular weight brain follow by warfarin ni. The same results be dulu ya. Bahamar atau mana ni? River Ruxaban is more appropriate than the SC low molecular heparin plus warfarin. So that PMU rom ho. It's comparable. So lu rajin or research model di mana pihom esok ini non inferiority study lu kore. So lu non inferiority apa ni rau tu adui. Dah me tapak apa yang ji ini no SC tu ada risk di warfarin tau ni jono lu a. Ayana pohon sebiro follow up yang koko ni ada burden si. Dari guru atau pema river rugs event tahun lain je apa? Very convenient dos. Once a day pi je apa? Dari ujol wah naik ni sura benefits ni ro tu bema si ni la wali. Ero cancer patient non cancer patient square lai dek kamal eh the same thing happen their area as well bo no that area as well. Sura regarding vidi pi dek no. Major bleep it there, no cancer, non cancer, the low name, who's the low margin or a comparable to the conventional therapy, ne, river rooks of an a kind of days or all a general what to eat a body. Hobby, a road general say them are cool up and provoke VTE anticoagulation alone. Conventional to amla, river rooks of an to amla, non inferiority study, she day. Will be convenient to that though, mess when we have oral anticoagulants, a general to nine. Home treatment law, hospital treatment law. Dasin sabu lu ada, boh no. Lu ada kerja ro. Cilai do. Through time di sini maro home terapi boh. Dah aku na Dr. Pravin mention tu lu be mobile health tu tele health tu. Di lu ham yo re develop je deh so ya no jono ro asap develop je deh boh no. Di lu guideline yo a. So through aro home terapi yo boh biro uzah pi deh. Do do le hospital treatment me benefit patients with length threatening DVD or those high risk of bleeding. She deh lu mewo so ya no. Initial First 21 days at Dwema admission kanara lu gaun lu me. Let's say first 7 days to 10 days lau Dwema. Jono ji me, bie no pian bie sen lu ya nai ne sore ni taro shi. So ro, ASA she guideline ya ro di lu lu na miu ma home treatment gu dulu a po bi ro prefer pia dao dui de bo no. So di kes li wo pian ji lai lu shi in and complicated and provoked VTE in previously well patient. Da li le lu a ba de. Previously well patient. E lu lu miu ma Initial management in anticoagulation only, DOEX over VKA, home treatment over hospital treatment. And so, any Luna ga, chanoru initial 21 days, primary treatment go six months you like day. Secondary prevention into it, now that Lua o ma la, ta li tu pian sin za ji yao, no? And so, secondary prevention into it, now that, tan ni lao ta bi o ma la. Pian ni ra ga, and provoked, and complicated VDE in previously well patient. To remove secondary prevention, long long ma pi ro be chano ru primary treatment a pi chao la ma yap jim la. To remove indefinite, tau shao tau bi ro so re tran e be chano ru sa dwa ma la. To remove prognostic scores di. Di dai ma li pian pao ji da ru. Atrasao li pian yai bi ro lua li ma DVD miya shi ni di la lu pian tuet ji da ru. 
ဒီလိုမိုစကိုရင်စစ်တမ်းနေအများကြီးပါကျွန်တော်ထင်းတဲ့ဒစီးစီတည်းမှာစကိုရင်စစ်တမ်းအများဆုံးသည်ဒီ
ပဲနော်ကစက်ဂျက်စ်လုပ်တယ်ဒီဝါရှင်ပြထားတယ်ပေါ့เนาะဒီလူနာမှာကျွန်တော်တို့တည်ကြတဲ့အန်တီကော်
primary treatment phase pi da ne chan ro dilu luna myo ma so yin yat lo ya bi bo le ro dilu na o pyan ji me so yin provoked vde te ja de transient risk factor shi de anticoagulation only doex over warfarin aspirin o khana yat tha me home treatment me chan ro pi bo tin ne bo no duration in a 3 to 6 months pi pi yin no chan ro aspirin o eri chai ma pyan sa bi do chan ro pi me anticoagulation ma lai do nya le aspirin sa bi pi tha me bo no okay เอ่อทุนสันไดเอ่อจัลลันก็ฮู้ชายุมองเว้ยเปียวบุโลอินเดียมินามีจัลลันบ่เนาะสแกนโซดามาตรอเลยโหสัตไดโซได้บ่เน
closely monitor low hemodynamically unstable phit de so no thrombolytic therapy lo at nine ne hemodynamically compromised or sa la de ga systolic blood pressure less than 90 out yaw ne anticoagulation alone ne ma ya la ho di lu na myo do ri mo baseline ye out go 40 mm mercury systolic blood pressure cha do are da myo so ye no jno ro a in addition to anticoagulation thrombolytic therapy yo jno ro uza be ni ne sin za de ne boli ero lu na ga anticoagulation pe lai de duration and type of anti thrombotic therapy jno ro set sin za ro me so two ma key ya ro khu na jno pya ge de risk factor e ma chronic risk factor ga mot inoperable active malignancy chemo unit de risk de shi de twa di lo lu na myo so yin do continue anti coagulant therapy for secondary vte prevention indefinitely jno ro pe ya ro me myo sa de ma pa de tu se yo wa sin yin jno ro ga jno ro ye record se ma vte treatment twa tak ku ku ro pa twa ya me lu na myo sa de ho yaw ni da mo no so ro di lo lu myo so yin yo tru wa zi sit ji da bo no anti coagulation ma pe be aspirin lo ha myo be ยีชีปีท่าไลน์ยิงก็ยามล้าบ่เนาะสรุปริสกิจีไลท์ตัวเอ่อตุโรกก็รออันติคอกลิชั่นเปเบิลโกเบปูพี่รออาตันเนี่
The first question is how much uh, emphasis do you put in the Apple Watch for the uh, diagnosis of the EF? The second question is uh, it's quite quite common for the people with the coronary uh, artery disease to have the EF leading the uh, NOAC. In that case, how do you uh, judge uh, using both aspirin? and the NOAC in that situation, especially in, uh, the potential for the, for the bleeding, the stain. And uh, uh, do you, if I say that, uh, once you have diagnosed a patient with short fibrillation in either proximal EF or whatever, the, anti, uh, the anticoagulation use has to be lifelong. It's my statement, uh, correct? And that, that, one question for Professor uh, Hinyanza. Uh, I used to remember that if the patient has the, the malignancy of the uh, uh, thromboembolic uh, phenomenon, the use of NOAC is a bit controversial and the, the uh, low molecular weight heparin or even the unfractionated heparin is preferred in that situation. Thank you. Thank you, Prof, for the wonderful questions. And these are the common questions in everyone's mind. So first, how much Apple Watch is reliable? Uh, at the generation next now that Apple 8 watches, they are quite reliable. When they diagnose the irregular rhythm, they give you the notification or they ask you that it is atrial fibrillation. You can press the button and you can record that ECG that they comes with the export PDF option and then they can export the PDF. So it is, I saw around five to six patients and there is a clear cut, very nice ECG showing the AF. Some patients may have the symptoms of palpitations, but some are silent and the watch alerts them that this is the AF. So it is quite reliable Fitbit and Apple Watch and newer generations they are able to diagnose. Nowadays, uh, I saw in the ESC conference, even the, uh, you know, the stroller in the uh, supermarket, they're engaging the heart uh, AF devices so that that can also identify it. Even the commode seats in Japan. And uh, there are many ways where the AF can be diagnosed and they're implementing in each and other things. So it is quite reliable and we can see the ECG, sir. So it is, we should use artificial intelligence and newer DISs for the diagnosis of AF. Second question is very interesting, the uh, po post PCI and uh, atrial fibrillation. So both the age is same, means at this age you can get the atrial fibrillation as well as the coronary artery disease. So the current recommendation is if the patient have the acute coronary syndrome and uh, he's having the AFib, so we have the newer generation stent where the anticoagulation duration can be cut down. As far as the recent du duration, they say that at least one month of the seven days to one month of the dual antiplatelet along with anticoagulant, no walk. After one month, you have to cut down the aspirin and go with the clopidogrel plus newer anticoagulants. Yeah, there has the risk of sometimes the bleeding versus the stent thrombosis. But current guidelines say that we should follow this because of triple therapy, like two antiplatelets as well as plus anticoagulant has a high risk of bleeding. So considering risk and benefits, so one month of the DAPT dual antiplatelet plus anticoagulation. After one month, we can switch over to the single antiplatelet and anticoagulant. And after one year, you can stop antiplatelet and just anticoagulant. I have few patients who had having two to three stents, but they are having the atrial fibrillation. We can completely stop the antiplatelet because the artery is endothelized and then the platelet does not make any difference. So at that time, you can just give them the anticoagulant. 
about the third question, AF. Yes, it is a lifelong. As the age increases with the AF, the stroke risk increases. Yeah, you can reduce the dose as per the is renal function or the age related, or you can choose the anticoagulant, which is safe for the patient along with the PPI cover, but he need to take the anticoagulation lifelong. Thank you. Oh, yeah, Jesu Dimarans, yeah. Malignancy in a general cancer associated thrombosis, for no? Every low duri maro, conventionally, general, as he low more good heparin, do you know, as he ponder very nox, no? Era general, or Tony Jabody. A do the lady Einstein TV, Dine, Einstein TV, or Eddie Sturdy, say maro to guard the Kunab your conventional treatment, eh? The no extin, eh? Pian Shinji like they come maro. Uh, primary outcome or secondary outcome are comparable pite, non inferior pite. So, you know, we can use either conventional therapy or no X or do X for the low mu team you were trapped. Yeah, malignancy so did that thrombosis molu, no X be a me, a lu yom ho de was ya. Tisu de my say. Cananelli, who could you have your money? You know, the Lomolo Jula way happening or UFC are. Prefer regime name of Pare. Now, the Natal Nasetti can associate thrombosis guideline, but no, the bigger than Nicaro. Through a two and a shenade triaria, young Kaunga, up to a prefer a maro, who are a cancer associated thrombosis male, two a good don't move, through a recommend love laribo. I daro don't yare, the metons and I may who can say in two yard in a two or in a sort of Tausia and a name yam pobido, a same gimalabo. Effective to do web to a we, not only say the guy do a car she or yap the yard toilet. Controversy, I began it and don't need logado controversy, still controversy, good or do a go, like I be. We were also been a piece of a go, don't win you like the any mama, Gian Gansari, my so we know, so so I'm Jodalu, Mr. Rabin Jodalu, where we were also been down in all PPI and lean it to a dome marble. To repeat all, Gian Gansama, so we know, we were also been on TV, recommend Meloche Mure to a Gian bleeding. Risk me alu, a piece of don't be babo, no? Ero Nakusalon, don't know yadu about it now. Don't know yad against us who see them. Okay, we two mess who we know, eh? Don't know that we have been set to do yabari. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Yes. Good morning. Thank you and congratulations to all the speakers who gave us a very informative and interesting lectures. And also thank to the Company for sponsors, no? sponsorship. Uh, I'm a retired anesthetist, so I wondering. To, uh, I noticed why the not, nothing talking about the low molecular weight uh, heparin, and is it the role of the low molecular heparin is declining at the current practice? And number two, in my. Uh, Practice in, uh, in my necessary practice or as a intensivist, I found uh, there are a lot of the massive bleeding from the GI tract after taking the globidogra and also the warfarin for various indications. And then I notice the nowadays the most of the uh, most of the uh, clinicians, the physicians, they, or uh, cardiologists, they are more used to the, 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 as a apisaban and also the rivero saban instead of our traditional aspirin, dopidocra, warfarin after the uh, uh, post ablation for the AF and also the CABG. I just want to know your opinion. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that's a uh, you know, good person or appropriate person to answer this question as my co-chair, Professor Tolony, and he's, he, is, he has got a lot of experience in uh, you know, uh, uh, use of anticoagulants in practice. Your first question is, uh, 
declining is there any declining the use of uh, low molecular weight in right. clinical yes. practice this is the first questions you know he has got a lot of experience and another one is uh, um you know massive bleeding yes after using clopidogrel and yeah. warfarin and that's why you know uh, when compared with the use of uh, duag and nuag is there any a uh, still role of uh, warfarin or uh, aspirin uh, but what's the second question? Could you clarify for me, please? Okay. Uh, I have found this uh, gastric bleeding. Uh, okay. And then the patient was brought to the OT or something to ICU for resuscitation. And, but I never come across any case after taking the uh, Eliquis or Zarado. Uh, Okay, mostly, mostly is a uh, clobidogram and warfarin. Okay, yes. Okay, see, I hope my mother who Lomolo Jalawe have bring a Rua Chalavi last hope. The Kavaloma or Chalavi, see, oh, okay, see, Lomolo Jalawe have bring a Wafri, use car or the PV, now Jalavi. The women say, who did my lepia to all in me to know who are and do Google and Idema Wafri, who about Lomolo Jalawe have bring Makaya Vene. ဒါရိုက်တုံးလို့ရတာတော့ရီဗာရောဇဗင်နဲ့အပြစ္စဗန်နဲ့ရှိတယ်ဒီမှာရှိတဲ့ဒါဗီကာထွင်ဘောပမ
in other countries, uh, they are treated at home. But in Myanmar, patients should be hospitalized for seven to 10 days. What's the definite reason to keep him admitted? Um, say, medically bad problem my long term medications are cool down the case one, unprovoked and complicated VDE when no no. So, the home treatment may be monitoring low close monitoring on low at Davoli, Yanko Chibugaro, Ubiro Tendorabo. Say on the indications for hospitalization. She and all the mule, no indications for hospitalization for any other reasons. Well, the child reasons lay machine, who hemodynamically stable, blood pressure okay, saturation okay. A little mule are original tene, say on the biku ame, a musare or mapa, ulu veteno, home treatment male, general time being in a pime suenda, pilu yavare, a big age and oru a covet gala jita shaw low mono, a rimasu in legend or ruria, and the coagulation seal, home treatment in it. A ni ma we chan oru tonge jara. Dabi me tuku shi mobile health. No tele health be koko mobile health. Chan oru monitoring lo bhi re lao lao la la poku di yao shi re so yin chan oru da tong lu ya ni ba. Jesu de ma re. Thank you. No question ni dikwa le se wen la buro kao ma. Chan oru da di karam brightest ma le nene pi pi ni da ri pa ra po no. Aro di me gu ni ara ba le se ragu Lumo like a wet hair printing, I let Bill Wapit, so do as Yamid was Lobo. Current brightness, my general inoxyprinile injection are easily Vuluvapine. At all. Long term set to Amar or Wafrin Medwame, Dabime Shima Inoxa Asau to Akton Biro, followed by Wafrin or Yanemala. Sanyi, Sanyi, a pig. Sanyi. โอเคเชียงเงี้ยหน่ะတော့ครับพี่จนเอาเว็บสิไปไล่ไปมั้ยอือสะท้อนอ่ะโลมะโลจะลาเวเฮเปรนเนฟอลโลไปวาฟรี
ไอ้เจสกาတော့อิงวาฟรินโดสลุกเตอไตเมเปลี่ยนๆมีไอเอ็นอาร์โรงานเยตะแพอสิงปีไวน์ 2 so in less year, the family physician in a GB Majawan and a Jamada, I can have the latter Kale Lama Pouching. So in lay to a Rajaro Pussy in Shine, Wafringa Yalai Wafring Eshian Nayalani in Cogne, Ero Nayalani, I am not near our Yaldo Ayen, Saru Duego Salu Yavi, Tede Duego, I am not near our Yamibo, Tachini Romalone, Wafring was in Julia, Yavi, I am not near our Yawi, Saru Due Salu Yavi. No, thank you. ဒီဒီမာရဲ့အဲအနဒါကွက်ရှင်အော်အွန်လိုင်းကမိတာတာပါလဲဆိုတော့အာအစ်တဲအနီဒရက်အင်တာအက်ရှင်ဘီတွင
uh, DS in the LED 10 years back. Yeah. I'm now on the anti pigment therapy. And uh, if I were to have the DF, I have to switch to the uh, NOAC, or in which situation I should be taking uh, antiplatelet as well as a NOAC. Thank you. Uh, so recent trial concluded that after one year of the post PCI, if you have the uh, atrial fibrillation, you can completely switch over to the anticoagulant and stop antiplatelet. So they clearly mentioned that you should stop antiplatelet after one year and uh, continue with only anticoagulant. So you can only just switch over to the anticoagulant Rivarex 7 like this. And we are uh, doing it thus. Initially, yeah, definitely, there will be a lot of hesitation. Yes, no, I had hesitated only to give anticoagulant and because and to skip antiplatelet because we are been so so much in the mind that antiplatelet should be given to the coronary artery disease and I should take it. But uh, currently they had uh, guidelines and the studies clearly has shown the data that only antiplatelet, anticoagulant, mainly uh, rivoraxaban is more preferred. So in the, because it also protect the atherosclerotic art arteries and also the atrial fibrillation. So most of the studies mentioned. Can there be any reason for continuing the antiplatelet in the DS because of the model and the, 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 uh, the, the, the type of the DS that has been used, the, the pharmacologic agent that has been impregnated in the DS? Is there any reason for, for it though? Uh, I don't think so, sir. The, um, actually after one, one year, there is a stent is endothelized, then whatever the DS, biodegradable polymer or anything, it doesn't matter. So endothelization means it is completely covered by the normal coronary artery. So there is no need for anticoagulation. The DS uh, drug eluting stent, basically all these things are, is because there were two stents. One is the bare metal stent without the coating. And then comes the stents with the drug eluting coating. So what was happening in the bare metal stent is the, in initially after the one or two, one month, there was an increased endothelization because of the injury when we put the stent. We put the coating on the stent, so paclitaxel or uh, zetrolimus or anything, they are like antimitotic drugs to prevent that injury happen to the vessel and to, so that it should not proliferate and close the stent. So after the delayed time, there will be the safe healing of the vessel and which will endothelize the coronary arteries very well. So that was the reason. And after the endothelization, whether it is bare metal stent or whether it is drug eluting stent, and it doesn't matter much after one year. So I think so whatever the DES, you can switch off and just switch over to the uh, Novax. Okay, thank you. Yes, one more question from uh, yeah, Sorry, <laughs> one more, please. Uh, just now, uh, earlier on, the CRG had pointed out that a patient on the warfarin had to wait for the INR to two, then switch over to uh, uh, to what? Uh, okay, no? Uh, so i wondering if there is any uh, cutoff point at that point, we had to cut out the, the, the this Zarado. Uh, <clears throat> uh,
other causes of cellulitation are very useful. So, so a chronic alarm, a primary malaria is a alarm. Lance man, so a microtrombosis to check. If we do not have, no, so a jamu primary malaria, so a thromboprophylaxis go do not need to wait for two years. So, any man can do a two years. If they are not normal, you can see that you go to a cytokine storm, not that far away. Into a jamu team, me. Covid lunari ye, tu cuci dah malam ya. Pasti steady ketahui cuci ni lagi. Jaya ye, kami no treatment ya. Kalau nasi kau ni, alu kau ni semua pasti apa macam treatment belum ada. No, normal jelah ye. Jadi ye, not without risk. Dah dia dia tu malah beli beli swasti ya. Kalau normal jelah ye, jadi ni ulo. Covid ke, tu dibi di proteksi sama. Tapi di mata ulo je. Ada ni alu maro di cahaya di mesti dia tu kau. No, tu mah. Dua ko, tu dia bila orang tu beli orang lo, tapi sahaja tu tu dia hip replacement lo, tu dia knee replacement tu macam tu. Kena tak cakap tu dia tu dia proflexis pun, no, di trombo proflexis ni, tu dia punya tu lagi. Kalau dia shock tu, tu dia mana nak sebab dia macam tu, no. So, kalau tu satu orang kubin ni dia macam ni ada di mana tu, dia tak nak macam ni. Kalau tu dia macam awal siapa tu, dia tak nak awal siapa lagi tu, dia macam siapa tu siapa tu. Optimum range of the FI and STI is very good. So, RBI. I know for that frame was. And? I know two of my machines. She did. She was. You don't need to look at the arm. You don't need to look at the arm. You don't need to look at the arm. I know we will increase the work of mine. Dua tahun itu sih, ayah nak nenek tengen, ayah nak nenek tengen ni tu jam dua. So tuan orang nenek ni cuma suruh tu cuma tu dua ni waktu ni tu jam ni mah ayah nak seta ni tu nenek ni saya. Tua waktu ni tahun ni ayah nak tengen, jadi dua jam ni tu, so tua ayah nak kata kau yang dua bo. Kalau waktu ni tu dua tu jam ni suruh sih, dua tu jam ni yang hari ni amat dua. Dua itu ayana wafrin opiang mesurusi. Dua itu masakin o ayana pawa pame. Dua itu bima ayana pawi falsely increase ayana nenep sedate. Ero dua itu itu siaru itu main o no monitori edo ayana lama pawi siamelo siap piang le cheese siamelo ada monitori ne tualu ya. Ero sorry, if the patient have the stain, no or CABG. Solusi yang kena biadu itu adalah dua itu satu bawah mana without monitoring the INR tu ada tu perform life lah baru perlu tahu macam mana. Tuh dia siapa? Perform life itu tuh hubeh mah. Okay siapa? Hu area generally ya lor hu ada akui kurun ni event mah jua ni pelik ni dua ni pound tu ni siapa tu? Kita beri jual tu hubeh. Pertama tala, nampak tu la. Pertama jua ni pelik ni pound halus ini tala ni. Andi pelik leh tak kuat show, wan andi pelik leh dua wan. Okay. Tahun lalu ni pelu sih, andi pelik leh kuat show biro dua itu for life tak dua luya. Oh, okay sih. Tahu lalu luya. Okay. Thank you. Wah, sih ay andi pelik leh macam macam. Jangan lupa, wari uma surgical or dental procedure. Jadi, AF itu alih dari nusi jauh ini. Jadi, kita dalam proses ini AF kita stroke pun kita tidak. Ada jam lalu, dua di sini nusi no stroke prevensi ini jadi dua itu tunggu ya, dua dua. So, ada four light lagi, no? Ada kalau tunggu ada non fagula AF no, dua tu ada non fagula AF. Fagula AF mah dua yang betul no, stay working di sini dulu. Fagula sudah microbiota itu dibaca AF. Kalau nak buat apa? Kalau alih diagnosis ni, prevention tu dia tu awal. Prevention ni dia tu sih dia macam, kalau nak dia macam cakap tu sih, dia ni ahi atau macam apa sih dia tu? Ni ahi atau macam apa? Kita jangan buat apa-apa. Sekarang ni kita ni ni ada treatment tu. Treatment ada siapa tu? Kita 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 nak tahu dia macam apa? Kita macam ni lah. Ada dua treatment ni macam, one point ni, satu ada home treatment ke siapa? Siapa tu le? Kalau family physician or Jenol baru family physician tu tu mana? Nampak GP tu ada jenol eh GP time ni dah le, atau ada clinician. Kalau physician ni ni le, pas pertika 
ဟုတ်ကြီးမရပြီးတော်မှာလေးသုံးတာမှာဆရာတို့ဆရာတို့ဂျီဘီမာပဲပြုလို့ရတယ်ဟောဂျီဘီမာပဲပြီးလိုက